Hey Kidaki here with a video that I've been putting aside for a couple of days. Today we're going to be talking about Jack Rathbone and we're going to answer the following questions. We're going to talk about how good is he, is he NHL ready, will he sign, and what the Canucks might do if he doesn't sign. So watch till the end to learn more and to hear the answer to these questions. And subscribe if you do go on to enjoy today's video. First, let's talk about who is Jack Rathbone. Rathbone was selected 95th overall by the Vancouver Canucks in the 2017 NHL entry draft of the fourth round. He is 21 years old and he is 5 foot 11 and 190 pounds. He is born in Massachusetts and he currently plays for Harvard University. So some of you might be wondering, why am I talking about a fourth round pick from three years ago? Well, that's because this guy is more than just a fourth round pick. He is a guy who's putting up over a point per game in the NCAA as a defenseman. He is a guy who is outscoring the fifth overall pick from last year by five points while playing one less game than him. He has more value than the average fourth round pick. Rathbone has had two great seasons with Harvard with 22 points in 33 games in his first year and this year he had 31 points in 28 games. Yes, he's 21, but those are still outstanding numbers for a 21-year-old defenseman. Rathbone has been climbing the Canucks prospect rankings throughout his two years in Harvard. And the fact that he is up there with top prospects such as Jet Wu, Brogan Rafferty, Ole Levy, and more is pretty exciting as all of those guys have the potential to be top four defenders. Rathbone is a good defensive player, but he is also very good offensively. He is a smart player and he's an amazing passer. I've seen numerous tweets about his passing and highlights showing his passing and his amazing stretch passing. So he's clearly a good playmaker and a high IQ player. I think Rathbone has the potential to be a good top four defender and realistically, I think his ceiling is a tie end top four defender who puts up like 30 to 50 points per season. Just to prove that Jack Rathbone is pretty darn good, let's do some comparisons to other young high profile defensemen who used to play in the NCAA. The first comparison we have is to John Marino. Marino was one of the best rookies this season and he also played for Harvard in the NCAA. In his best season in the NCAA, he scored 16 points in 33 games when he was 21. And that is the current age of Jack Rathbone. And this season, Rathbone had 31 points in 28 games. Yes, Marino isn't exactly the best offensive defenseman. He is still good offensively, but he's more of a two-way player. And he isn't known for racking up a point per game, but still, he is a very good NHL player. So the fact that Rathbone is outscoring his NCAA points is pretty exciting and promising. The second and final comparison is to Adam Fox. Adam Fox is one year older than Jack Rathbone and he also played for Harvard. He is easily an elite potential talent and he is without a doubt one of the league's best young up and coming defensive stars. When Fox was 21, he scored a career high of 48 points in 33 games with Harvard. And although he outscored Rathbone's season, Rathbone was on track for 36 points in 33 games. So the fact that he came relatively close to an elite talent is pretty promising. He definitely will not be an Adam Fox level player, but he will be good. And it may seem like Rathbone isn't that good after that comparison because of how much he was outscored by Fox, but Fox was a Calder contender and he literally had 42 points in 70 NHL games this season. And that's near what I predicted Rathbone's ceiling to be. So we can't expect Rathbone to be the next Adam Fox and we can't expect him to be an elite player. We just can't. But we can expect him to be a very solid and good defenseman in the future. This brings us to our next question. We know he's pretty good in the NCAA and we know he'll probably be a really good player in the future, but is he NHL ready right now? Rick Dollywall sent out a tweet talking about Jack Rathbone. And in this tweet, he mentions that he thinks that Rathbone 
could crack the lineup on the third line of defense. And then he also has this audio clip. And in this audio clip, he also mentions that Rathbone will probably stay below the Hughes line, or as he says it, the Edler and Hughes line, I think. And I don't know if that means it's the Hughes line or just the whole top four defensive lineup because Edler and Hughes don't always play together. So I'm just gonna assume that he meant the top line. And logically this works. Rathbone would fit as they have one spot left for the taking and that is the spot that Jordy Ben and Oscar Fannenberg sort of split. So he fits into the lineup if he's ready. And it was pretty obvious that Rathbone was not going to be a top line player. Realistically, of course, because there could end up being like an insane like Cinderella story or whatever. So it makes sense. But is Jack Rathbone actually ready for the NHL? I think Rathbone is ready as he's putting up numbers better than the fifth overall pick who is a forward and he outscored John Marino, who is currently a solidified roster player and he came close to a potential elite defenseman in Adam Fox. So it's looking like he should be ready statistically as his stats are just flat out amazingly. So yes, I think Jack Rathbone is NHL ready. Will he be a star player next year? Nearly all signs point to no. And it's like the Hoglander situation. We know he's going to be really good, but we know that he probably won't be an immediate big impact player and we can't expect that from Rathbone yet. So I think Rathbone is NHL ready, but he's ready enough to be a top six defender on probably the bottom line. He's not ready to be a top four or top line defender. Now that we know he'll probably be an NHL ready player, will he sign with the Vancouver Canucks? Now, this part of the video is probably gonna be the most important part and the most hot topic part as there's so much uncertainty and speculation surrounding this question. Will Jack Rathbone sign with the Vancouver Canucks? Rathbone has until Wednesday the 15th to decide whether he will sign or not. And it is said that he might not sign. And it is rumored that he has a higher than usual flight risk. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that he may not sign with the Canucks and he may wait till next year to become a free agent and sign somewhere else. The reason for this is probably because of a few factors. He might want to go home and finish his education with Harvard as he is a smart kid or else he wouldn't have gotten into Harvard as Harvard's probably one of the best schools in the world and he probably values his education. And he also may want to stay near his brother as that has always been a priority for him throughout of his career. And if he decides to sign with the Canucks, he may not even play in the NHL. It's not guaranteed. And something that may shift the tides toward Vancouver is the fact that the next NCAA season is looking like it may be canceled due to the pandemic. So if he stays in Harvard, he probably won't be playing hockey or at least hockey games. He may do practices, but besides that, he would just be doing his education. So it makes sense for him to sign in Vancouver if he has plans on playing in the NHL either way. But if he isn't sure if he wants to play in the NHL as his career, it makes sense for him to stay in Harvard. So he has a lot of uncertainty surrounding where he will play next year. And if he doesn't sign with the Canucks this year, he will be a free agent next year. So he could do what Jimmy VC and a few others did. Rick Dollywall says that his sources in Harvard have said that he hasn't made his mind up. So it's not like Adam Fox or Jimmy VC where they had their eyes set on a certain place. It's not like he does not want to play in Vancouver and he hasn't set his eyes on anything. And he has a lot of different factors pulling him either way. So I can't make any real prediction. I could give you a percentage later but there's so much uncertainty surrounding him. But like I mentioned, he has a higher than usual flight risk, but that isn't as high as someone like Jimmy VC or Adam Fox had. It's just that he has a chance of maybe moving somewhere else and it's higher than usual. But the Canucks have a very good history with signing NCAA players. 
like Adam Gaudet, for example. So, do I think the Canucks will sign Rathbone? I don't exactly know. I think he'll want to play hockey next year and continue to develop. And if he doesn't play in the AHL, Utica is still going to be amazing for his development. So I think there is a 60 to 65% chance that Jack Rathbone will sign in Vancouver. I think that the tides are kind of shifting in Canucks' favor because of the pandemic and the fact that Rathbone may not play next year if he doesn't sign. That also boosts up the Canucks' chance of signing him quite a lot. So given the circumstances, I think it's still very optimistic, but it's shifting towards the Canucks' side. And he also hasn't said that he wants to go to a specific place. So even if he doesn't sign and he doesn't get traded, he still could end up signing with Vancouver next year and play in the 2021-22 season. Now we come to the final subtopic of today's video. What the Canucks could do if Jack Rathbone doesn't sign with them. So in some situations like this, the team ends up trading the player before they become a free agent. So there is a chance that if Jack Rathbone doesn't sign in this small period, he could get traded in between the deadline of the period he could have signed in and the day he becomes a free agent next year. So the Canucks could get a little bit for Rathbone if they end up not signing him. And they could potentially, if they're lucky, package him with a bad contract. After all, they need cap space. And a trade like that could and probably would help them out a lot. And Jack Rathbone and one of the players with a bad contract like Antoine Rousseau for a low round pick like a fifth, sixth, or seventh round pick isn't necessarily a bad trade. You'd obviously have to find someone who really likes and needs Jack Rathbone because even then the value is still iffy because he gets brought down from that big contract. But if they're lucky, they could get that trade accepted. And if they're really lucky, they could package Brandon Sutter in that trade. But an unsigned high-level prospect that will become a free agent soon still isn't worth that much. It's only worth the value of like a third or fourth round pick, maybe just maybe a second round pick, depends which team you're trading with. So chances are that they will only be able to get rid of the Sutter contract at best. And even then, that's extremely lucky. Even if they get rid of like something like Roussel's contract, that's still a very lucky accepted trade. Because the team that they would be trading Rathbone to would just be losing a couple million dollars and a bad pick for a tiny head start on Jack Rathbone's contract negotiations. You could say that they couldn't negotiate the whole year, but negotiations don't really pick up until around when the player becomes a free agent. Yes, the trade could really pay off for the team that gets Rathbone, but it's a high risk trade. So we can't really expect someone to accept this immediately. And we can't really expect someone to accept Brandon Sutter's contract. But if we're really lucky, we could package Brandon Sutter's contract and if we're lucky, we could also get Antoine Rousseau out. But realistically, it probably won't get accepted. Also, just to clear things up, I wasn't talking about both Brandon Sutter and Roussel being in a trade. It may have sounded like that. Like when I was reviewing the clip, I was like, hold up, it kind of sounds like I'm saying Roussel and Sutter in the same trade. But I don't want to re-record that clip as it was pretty good besides that. So just to explain, I meant subbing out Sutter for Roussel or Roussel for Sutter, not both of them in a package. Also, another trade that I thought of while I was editing is instead of Roussel and Sutter, if the teams really don't want to accept, you could also do someone like Jordy Ben with like a $2 million contract, which seems like a more realistic trade, but there's not that much cap getting cleared up compared to if you were to trade Sutter and sort of compared to if you were to trade Roussel. That concludes today's video. Thank you so much. Yeah, you listening right there. Thank you for watching till the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to tune in for more content coming out very frequently. Until next time, bye.